I wrote I Will Wait at a time that I was really struggling. Um, Jamie had gone on a third deployment and I had had our fourth baby while he was gone. And then he turned around and went on a fourth deployment very soon after that. And during that fourth deployment, I just, I hit rock bottom. I started to see a therapist, which was incredibly helpful. And she suggested journaling and I just decided, you know what, I have a theater background. I'm just gonna write a play, put it all out there. And I started to interview other spouses, just ask them their stories. And the stories that came back to me were overwhelming in the way that my own story resonated inside of theirs. They gave me so much strength and hope and courage. One in particular, there was a woman, Rosie, that I interviewed, and she talked about the day that Pearl Harbor was attacked. Gib and I were out driving in the country when we heard over the radio that Pearl Harbor had been attacked. That ride changed, changed everything. everything for us. That's what 9-11 was for me. Jamie was going to do his five years in the Army. He was going to get out. We were going to go pursue a whole different life. As I heard Rosie's story and it mirrored my story exactly, I thought, oh my gosh, we have to share these stories. People have to know that they are not alone, that there are decades of spouses that have walked before us and have carried these same burdens. For me, the very first time I saw I Will Wait was 2015. And there's a line in the very first scene, it's a World War II spouse that's getting ready to welcome her service member home. He's been gone for two years in the European theater. And she makes a comment, what have I done? You know, I was just this young girl who married, married him in a church and then kissed him goodbye at a bus stop. And he's done all these extraordinary things over the last two years. You know, what am I? It was eye-opening to me and, and actually pretty gut-wrenching. And, and uh, I, I remember getting emotional when I, when I heard that line and, and thought, wow, if they only knew what they've done for us, if they only knew that they were our lifeline, that knowing that they were taking care of our families and, and loving us regardless of, of, of what happens, uh, in combat, that that was everything that, that the service member needs. Jamie had gotten orders that we had to move to Alaska. I cried for two weeks as we moved up there. And I met my next door neighbor, and she started to tell me about her work in expressive arts, and she was a therapist, and all of a sudden it all just connected. We should do the play, you should offer workshops, and then we moved around the corner to our third partner, Leah, who had ran successful businesses for decades, and we were like, hey, do you wanna help us? And all of a sudden, out of this cold, dark Alaskan winter, VSP was born. All paths converged, making one wide, beautiful, open road for the work I know I'm called to do when I met Amy Optograft in 2016. Developing the Made For You program and facilitating expressive arts workshops for VSP is my absolute heart work. Offering a space to spouses to drop all pretenses and just be their authentic selves. I've had spouses come to a workshop and say that we are the first people they are meeting after being in a location for three months and break down and cry because they've been so lonely. Setting up a new house for the first or ninth time, trying to grocery shop in a community that speaks a different language, or taking your veteran to one of many doctor's appointments are the dailies for some of these spouses. And sometimes regular, mundane, or normal simply never comes. It is so necessary and so needed for the mental health and emotional well-being of these families. Through mindfulness and creative expression, we connect, feel seen, heard, and supported. And sometimes we even heal. We do this by deepening the understanding of what military families endure during frequent moves, extended trainings, and deployments. With less than 1% of the nation's citizens serving in our all-volunteer force during a 20-year war, our families depend on a strong support network within our communities. From a veteran's perspective, if, if you want to take care of me, you know, take care of my family. So in achieving that, we see healthier families. We see families that are more resilient. So is the soldier, so is the leader, and they're able to really reach the peak of their performance. We've got high demands for them, and uh, with programs like VSP, they can achieve them. Your philanthropy and commitment to our mission and work has never been more important. During all those transitions, struggles, joys, and heartaches, there is opportunity to connect. We want to help you do that. Wherever you go, VSP will be there because in VSP, you belong.